The absolute lights and shadows of all things seen and that are of value in expanding our knowledge of the world in which we live. The words are from John Thompson, who was the photographic instructor for the Fellows of the Society in the 19th century. And his legacy was, in fact, that many of the photographers whose work is represented in the exhibition were tutored by Thompson. We phrase this exhibition as being an exhibition of firsts in relation to the first photography taken in many of the locations that you see. So for photographers uh, working, for example, people like Catherine Routledge, who was working on Rapa Nui, um, taking some of the first photographs of the, the, the East Island Moe statues, um, her method was to document the, the landscape in mapping terms, but also then to photograph what she'd experienced, what she'd seen. Ponting's photograph of the ice grotto is, is really exceptional, but the composition was the result of several different attempts. What Ponting's trying to do is to capture the qualities, the grandeur of the Antarctic. In the case of Hurley, the image that's shown is actually deliberately one of the men in what is almost a complete whiteout. And it's really talking much more about the role of Shackleton as a leader, drawing together a group of 27 men uh, who are effectively in this incredibly alien landscape. They are not absolutely certain about where they are and if in fact they're going to return alive from, from the expedition. The power of the photograph was so important to him that he decided to take those photographs with him on that onward journey to, they hoped, uh, rescue. There isn't a single example in that exhibition where there hasn't been significant change. There's been economic change, there's been critical change in terms of climate and I think it makes for us a really important um, visual record of, of how we have engaged with the, the natural world and so many scientists have used our photographs for example there's a whole sequence of aerial photographs from the 1930s from the very first flights over Everest using the, the log books from those early expeditions to do retro modelling on, on, on climate conditions and change. One of the most powerful photographs that I respond to is the image of the giant sequoia trees in Yosemite. Those photographs were taken by Carlton Watkins, who actually had a giant camera constructed to be able to take these mammoth plate-sized prints. And the photographs that he took were the very first photographic images of, uh, of the region. Those photographs were taken back to the East Coast and were displayed in galleries in New York. A set of those photographs was bought by Senator John Connors and Connors shared his set of um, those images with um, Abraham Lincoln. And Lincoln took the decision to actually protect Yosemite and put in place its role as the very first national park in the States. What we'd love people to do when they leave the exhibition um, is to, to be inspired by what they've seen and really to think about the ways in which that there is this kind of um, sometimes a tension between the original purpose of the photograph and the reason why it was taken and what we can do with that information today. Critical reassessment is a really important and powerful part of what we're trying to do.